Hello, welcome back to Monster Train. It's 7 p.m. I know what you're thinking. Where'd the time go today? I also am thinking that. If you're doing well, I'm doing fine. I recorded a full run of Into the Breach today, which is where most of my time went, I feel. But, yeah, I don't feel like... The run was three hours, so I don't. Really, it doesn't really feel like I should be here at 7. But I guess I, I probably took like a 10 to 30 minute break between each episode. So, you know. Anyway, hope you're doing well. I'm doing fine. Uh, moving forward, pardon me, there was a little ominous pause. Uh, moving forward, I am going to try to do three videos a day for a bit. We'll see if I can actually uh, hold it down. Uh, unsure, but, you know, I want to try it. So we're going to try to do Into the Breach, Arcanium, and Monster Train. We'll see how long I can keep it up. Uh, it probably won't start until the current run of Arcanium is over, which is tonight for you. So starting tomorrow, I'm going to try for it. I, I got a little bit of a backlog going, so eh, we'll see what we can do. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Today, Stygian Exile Umbra, Double Barrel Curse, Sap, Energy Siphon, Prismal Dust, Unnamed Tome. Cool. Uh, as I often do with a run such as this, I'm probably going to play a hyper-aggressive early game. You know what? This is the case. Okay, two things. One, Cheater's Hand. Probably better. Two, I want to pick Precious Plating because I don't want to play Cheater's Hand. But I think that Precious Plating is good here because it makes it extremely hard to die early. And I was about to tell you we're going to play an extremely aggressive early game. Our ability to kill enemies is not great. We have no good damaging spells to begin with. But I'm going to go I'm gonna go Chillwind, I think. Ah, no, I'm going to go Conduit. This is the Ultra Greed line. I'm going to do what I said I'd do. I don't think I have the Gall. I don't think I have it in me. Shade Lamp here is actually really good, I want to say. It's really, really good here because it, it's a strong early game relic. The stats you get from it are great. But I really, I honestly really want to play Sigiled Seaweed. I think it's really good. I'm, I'm coming around a little bit on it. Especially with a curse enemy on the horizon. I'm gonna go Sigil Seaweed. Now, uh, what did I say in yesterday's episode? I want to take the time to look ahead specifically at the duplicates. I want to identify where they all are. There's three on this run? There's three. Okay. Duplicates figured out. I'll look at the temples and stuff like that a little later. That is what I wanted to see. Now, if I want to be the most aggressive I can be, I'll take this trial. This trial will make me take damage. The payout is really high, though. Stygian wants to see a lot of units. So I'm expecting to take maybe like up to I'm, I'm, up, I'm up to like 70 damage here. I think I could take I'm expecting to take a lot. I want to make sure we're all clear on that. 70 is maybe a little high, but it's going to be a lot of damage. That's the expectation. I'm going to miss that collector and we don't care. It's actually going to be a little less with that draw though. Good Prismal Dust timing. Two train stewards. I might actually not take as much as I stated. Silence the priest. It'd be pretty cool to not take so much. If I only take six here, that's crazy. I'm okay with taking up to 70, I should say. Yeah, it's going to be a lot. <laughs> I have no way to kill this foot soldier. It's going to be a ton of damage. But, like I said, it's part of the plan. That's why I took Precious Plating, remember? I took it to be as aggressive as I can possibly be at the start of the game here. I don't think... I, I'm pretty sure it's not possible for me to die here. That's the, that's the main point of what I'm doing here. I think I can't die. Hmm. I cannot die. It's gonna be 35, or no, uh, 41. Yeah. So like I said, I'm, o I'm okay with taking up to like 70 damage there. I took 58, and that's what Precious Plating is for. It's to play the most unbelievably uh, aggressive start to a run you've ever seen. So that we can take Ice Tornado here. Uh, uh, Space Prism is good. It's a good pick. Oh god, for this monster train? I took 58 damage for this? You might not. It might not seem like a lot of. It, you might. It might not seem like that trial did that much. But one plank killing 
uh, the three five or the two five ones probably saves me because the five one dying would save me a lot of health on the relentless. It would save me a lot of damage. Well, it's the risk you take, isn't it? Not happy about it, but there's still time. Large stone for 105. Don't show me like double sweeper would be the real slap in the face. It's okay. I'll play Nameless Siren. It's okay. I'm going to just leave. I'm gonna look at the temples real quick. We have five temples on this run. Two now, two break, and then three later. I am I'm down for an intrinsic on Space Prism. I've been saying I want us to play it a little cooler on my uh, my spell takes or my, my pack shard takes. I'm not gonna go much above 25 until later, I think. Not really the strong start to the run that I was hoping for. I played an aggro start and I did not get rewarded. And that's okay, it's gonna happen like that from time to time. It's part of the life. Gross. Maybe, you know what, I should play top four here, I think. I was about to just slap it down bottom four, but with this enemy being silenced, first of all, I don't think I would be able to kill them anyway. And second of all, uh, with the silence, I think it's much easier to survive. And then I did take Morsel Maker to help out. Morsel Maker's gonna do his best. I think his best will be pretty good here, too. I think he'll do a lot for us. And... Pardon me, there's like... Something in my throat, perhaps. Uh, I should play Blink first. There's a 1 in 4 chance it kills that backliner. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, yeah, that's the life, isn't it? <laughs> oh, what a good card. Hey, good job, Plink. Alright, everyone, please clap for Plink. Okay, I'm gonna take four here. I don't think there's a line you can follow that makes you take less than four. You might be able to take two, actually, but I did not run the numbers on that front. A much more measured second combat, I feel. Very glad I picked up this Morsel Maker. I mean, I had to take something from that first combat. No, for, for taking 58 damage, I had to pick something. I threw my whole advantage away, so anything even small is good. Crystallis over Crypt Elder here. We have no offering, or no discards. Mine Collapse is fine. I don't think I need another Space Prism. And we get... I'm happy to take uh, all of these. These are all fine. I think Divine Advanced Prototype is the best one, though. It just guarantees you don't die in the next combat, which is nice. And we want to take a second here. I think that if I don't go to a Stygian Banner, we're going to be in trouble. What would I duplicate? Nothing. Okay, I think it's settled. This also gives us the nice added benefit of getting a few minus ones in here. Whoa, whoa. Who's that? He's good. He's very good, and we have 6-6 six, six as an infusion. 6-6 six, six per turn. It is excellent. Extremely playable here. I've had runs where I pick Yogorgon and then fall short. I think that this will not be one of them. I think that we have great setup for Yogorgon. Excellent setup for Yogorgon, I would say. Now, we do have to be a little bit aware... I have to be sure. Oh, we gotta think about how he's gonna live. Because he doesn't get quick. I'm gonna do plus 20 consume on a flink here. And then we're gonna leave it. Go check out the old cavern. I am missing, like, yeah, I'm missing 102 health here. This, there's a permafrost in the shop. This is it. This is Bone Dog's day. Get in here, Bone Dog. It's time. I've skipped a trillion Bone Dogs, but the trillion and first Bone Dog gets to come with. I'm down infinity health, and there's a permafrost sitting here. Yeah, give me that shit. I am A-OK. -okay. Now, I think... I think that if I don't do my infusion, I'm in a little bit of trouble. No, that's a lie. I don't think that's true. 
I think that it's better to wait. I think it's better to wait. But there's an asterisk. It's better to wait if I remove Nameless Siren right now. And I think that that is fine. I have exactly enough. Let's go on. I think it's better to wait because we want to... Uh, we want to get rid of... We don't want to get rid of the Eogorgon. Or no, sorry. I don't want to go to 50 pack shards right now. That's why it's better to wait. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't like this very much. Mm. Okay, well, I guess I'll play here. It's fine. I don't actually lose much for this. The thing I don't like about this is that on the next turn, a bomb can come here and kill me. I guess I could, you know what I could have done? I could have led with Plink. I could have played top four here. I could open with Plink and see if I get two morsels, and two morsels would block for me. Yeah. Oh, right, I have the super train stewards. Sorry, I'm freaking out over nothing. This is fine. There's nothing to be concerned about. I'm just gonna play a train steward in front and let him chill. Sorry, Morsel Maker, you don't even need to be here. Forgot about the big ol' steward. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I've reached a point where when Plink does that to me, I don't get angry anymore. It is pretty funny. I will admit, it is a little bit funny. Oh, man. Downright hilarious, even. Yeah, I, I should have been planning this combat out a little bit better. I should have been thinking more about how I have no actual fear here. Because of Super Train Steward. I forgot I had Super Train Steward. That's all there is to it. It slipped my mind that I picked that up. Give me the morsels here. I want to use a morsel to save a damage shield. Hmm, doesn't matter, actually. Okay. If you, the, the Super Train Stewards from the Divine Advanced Prototype, they do solo this combat. It's not really a close situation. It might not look it, but they're really strong. Yeah, if, if you were unsure, if you were not convinced, one of them does 195 to Daedalus. So... Good try, Plink. You know, you gave it you gave it a good effort, Plink. I can't be mad at you. I think I actually might have made a mistake here playing this train steward. We want this combat to go one extra round. Yeah, okay. These two train stewards win. The, the correct line here is to not play anything so that I don't accidentally kill Daedalus, because I want to let the combat go one more round to get five more HP back from Bone Dog. These two train stewards win for sure. So we just go ahead and heal up a little extra. Don't be silly with it. Thank you, Divine Advanced Prototype. Thank you, Train Stewards. Very cool. Forever Consumed is a almost always good card. Does this run reach a point where I incant more than six times per turn? I think the answer is probably. But... Is there a Steel Shop in the next ring? There is, okay. I'm good with this then. And we can go draw... I do have to find an answer to the age-old question of, oh no, Tethys, oh no. Also, I only have $75. I think it's fine. I go right. I think it's fine. Because I don't actually need expensive upgrades. I don't need, like, multi-strike quick endless. I need 25 HP. Yeah. Like... I could play large stone, but I actually think that this is better to just go... Maybe it's better to go health all the way. I'm gonna go 10, 1025. I think it's fine to just make him pretty good right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something that I've, I struggle very much with. I'm gonna not take the relic. I'm gonna stay my hand, and we're going to not click the relic. I want it. You, I, it's 
I don't know when the last time I've actually skipped a relic is. I love taking the relics, but it's not good here. It pains me to say it, but it's very bad here. I'm gonna get hit a lot. <laughs> My plan today is to die. It's okay, I have Bone Dog. Bone Dog will make this not be so bad. <laughs> Probably. Uh, Yogorgon's gonna go in front of the Morsel Maker. It's actually a nice, uh, strange way to have it play out, but... You know. Oh god, I wish I could get any amount of money in this round. We don't take 30? Incredible. What an unbelievable twist of fate there that I don't get clobbered. Now we enter the please don't hurt me phase of the run. What the hell, Plink? Great job. Holy cow, is that Plink? Rubble Morsel and I can just pay it forward here. Siren of the Sea, just get it out. And yeah, my health bar is pretty high. Even in the worst of times, I can probably heal through a really bad sequence. I'm, I'm starting to feel like we snuck our way on through here. Starting to feel like perhaps we have lived when I think it would have been. It, it was a scary, scary section when I dropped down to 22. However, like I said, it was part of the plan. I think that it's in, it's an important thing to notice though that it doesn't always work out, and that's fine. It's part of the deal. If you're gonna if you're gonna play super aggressive, sometimes you gotta be ready to miss like that. It's part of the idea. It doesn't bother me. Oh, he was just completely neutral there. Oh, we have a silenced home for the party boy, by the way. I should have known which boss it was. That's on me. But it pans out anyway. I was just holding the silence for a multi-strike to begin with. Oh, you know what? Since I silenced him, I could have tried to plink the 1-1 one -one away. Yeah, I should have tried to plink the 1-1 one -one for an extra health from Bone Dog. Oh, well. It's fine, because I'll heal up to full over the course of the run anyway. So I don't really mind. Actually. I'm okay. We're chilling. We're taking it easy. We're not doing anything too crazy. Guardian's Amulet isn't bad, but I do not have a discard, so... Guardian's Amulet is kind of bad, I think, as a result of that. So... I... I think I'll skip. I don't want to play Preserve. I don't think it's a winner. Oh, Void Binding is really strong here. This is a sneaky pick because you put it on your Eel Gorgon, it gets the rage and the damage shield on the turn. The damage shield gets eaten by the strikes from the enemies and such, and then it just goes away. Like we don't care after that point. It gets it gets purged off, and then we get the Ember Drain, but the Ember Drain gets purged off as well. I'm gonna go right. I was thinking I would go left here, but that's just wrong. It's just definitely incorrect. And we go magic shop. Old over. Old over minus one void binding is strong. I think that this is a winner. Could try to do double stack, but I think it's too expensive. I'll do hold over minus one. This is the winner, I think. And then we're at... we have three temples remaining, so I'm not worried about my Pact Shard intake. I'm worried about how little money I've made on this run. We're like, so poor. This is takeable. Mark of Invasion is fine. And I think everything is looking good now. I'm starting to feel pretty good. How you feeling? You feeling good over there? I'm feeling pretty strong. Blink first. Not a scary Harvesters of Death wave. Not a good old fashioned Harvester moment. I will silence this wave, but as we do, it is better to wait and silence when they are on the floor. 
I don't have a way to dodge Ember Drain here. It's just Morsel Maker's doing what Morsel Maker needs to do here, which is give me a small amount of uh, of health and, and attack to win Relentless. I don't care about that collector. I have no way to catch it anyway. Just don't even look at it. Now we go for the old Silence, the Void Binding. All right. I think we're there. I think that this run has made it through the darkness and is now fine. Take a few smart plays here and there, because I don't need the spam incants on the top floor. That's what you gotta remember here. I don't need to do that yet. It's not currently a better play. It becomes a better, better play soon. You're silenced. Take these from me. It's self-made harpy. That's what you should be concerned about here. It's self-made harpy. I am a little concerned about that. But we're 25 pack shards, I played it extremely safely. So I shouldn't be too too doomed here. It is just a 5x5. Five five. I guess I'm a little worried. Wow, what the hell plink? Whoa! Did you see that? That was wild. Okay, I mean great job, Plink. No notes. Excellent work. Hey, by the way, almost certainly this is going to go down as my most valuable bone dog in history, right? Like, how much did I heal off of this bone dog? A ton. An absolute load of health. Yeah, good fight. Staying low on pack shards, looking pretty good here. Looking like a smart play. Dude, the Eel Gorgon's, like, eyes flame. That's a great effect. Frenzied Swarm is a big winner for this deck. A great answer to I'm dying, oh no. Void Binding also a big winner. I think everything's coming together nicely. Could go look for double incants. It's not bad. I think it's better to not try to high roll in this position. Although, I there's a lot of places to high roll over there. So, an interesting thought either way. Let's go engage our pack. We're going to go Siren of the Sea over Morsel Maker as our infusion because... Uh, so Siren of the Sea has to average six spell casts per turn. I think that is attainable for us. I think it is achievable. Stable Vortex. Morsel Maker, thank you for your service. It's been an honor. Uh, I don't know if it was a 58 damage at the start of the run honor, but it's been an honor. I don't really want to get rid of any of this, honestly, but I should get rid of something to draw into Frenzied Swarm sooner. So it's probably Frozen Lance. Doesn't make a big difference, though. We'll go minus one Void Binding. And then we're going to reroll. I'm looking for Holdover. That's fine. Frenzied Swarm is free. Chill in here, and we go on. So, how do I keep Tethys alive? If that's what's on your mind right now. The answer is probably to play Metal Floor on future combats. Probably. Okay, I'm going to play Top Floor here because of the silence. We have... Ah, he's not... It's okay, I take a hit, it's fine. We, we have silences, so a lot of these curses won't happen. Or all of them. Thank you, Sigiled Seaweed. Keep it up. Frenzied Swarm clashes with Bone Dog, but that's okay. I don't like this. I guess I have Void Binding for it, actually. Never mind, it's fine. It's fine. It also clashes with Ice Tornado, but less so, because I'll just play Ice Tornado going forward. Looks pretty good. Three, four, five, six. We barely make it to six. I'm gonna play the Prismal Dust actually just to be rid of it. Uh, Sigiled Seaweed hasn't missed yet. It missed its first one. It's okay, Sigiled Seaweed. I don't mind. It happens like that, buddy. That would be seven in cans. Right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, that's only six in cans. Never mind. 
I was not correct. So I'm about on par with a Morsel Maker right now. But this is also Curse Fell, so. You know. Not really the most ideal gauge of how well I'm doing in terms of staying, keeping pace. I am getting caught here for 30, though. That's not good. I might actually die off of that. I don't like to see that very much, do you? Huh. Huh, huh, huh. This is definitely the scariest part right here. I wish I had a way to heal or something. Can you get a lifesteal morsel to work? Hmm. I am unsure. I do have to redraw Bone Dog, but that's okay. 62 times 6 is like 360. You hit twice. I think I'll be barely. Oh my god, what a great plank. Does, how does Lifesteal Morsel work here? I have no idea. Do I keep the Lifesteal? I would assume it goes away. It goes away, I think. Yeah, it goes away. Okay. So I'm gonna get two rounds here against Fel. Three. It's three rounds. I think I'll be okay. I think I will come out just barely fine. That Frenzied Swarm's a bit of a waste. Just barely okay. I was correct. <laughs> Alright, no problem. Nothing to worry yourselves about. Don't pick Trample Stone here, it's not very good. If I'm gonna play Middle Floor, Ice Empire is not great. Am I gonna play Middle Floor? That's a tough question, really. I'm gonna skip this. And I'm gonna take draw. And I think that. I think that as it sits, I'm probably a little bit short of survival. Just as we are right now. So there's two thoughts, and I'm gonna give myself the opportunity to see both of them. Uh, thought A is just play a second Eel Gorgon. And then when the first one dies, you'll at least have a second one behind it. And thought B is hold over Frenzy Swarm. Both of these ideas are fine. But we're definitely going to come up a little bit shy here. I wonder if, what if it's actually just a second Void Binding? Four damage shield per turn? The problem is a lot of the big ticket, like, killer enemies are multi-striking. I need to deal with those. God, these have not been very good for me. I'm gonna take another Eel Gorgon here. And then... I'm gonna take a 10. What's the worst card in this deck? It's probably Prismal Dust. I'll just get rid of it. I've been holding on to it as like a one-use free in camp, plus it uh, sometimes blocks damage for you, but I think I'm gonna toss it. Because I have to get rid of something here. And we're gonna go 75, so I take 25 here. I can take any, any two upgrades. Let's rock. I think we're we're close to being fine, but we're not quite fine. Yeah, like this is this is the exact sort of problem that we're gonna face. These enemies just hit multiple times and damage shield isn't enough. How do I fix this? Uh, good question. Second Eel Gorgon isn't a ter terrible idea. Trample boss. Mm. Alright, let's give it a shot. I'm gonna take it without the trial. Yeah, this can also happen where you draw Eel Gorgon on turn one. Or both of them, I should say. And this is not good. I wouldn't be surprised if this one got away from me. I won't lie to you, I don't feel great about it. I'm looking for the trick. I think that we want to put Energy Siphon here. 
so that I can kill it with Ice Tornado or Consume Plank, maybe? Yeah, one of those two cards will now kill. Yeah, I see the problems that this run is going to be facing, though, now. Nice and nice and clear. Easy to see. But where the hell are my cards? They're in here. Thankfully, I did draw one of the answers, which is Frenzied Swarm. You're silenced. I'm gonna play out all my spells here. I have a few answers to the problems that we face, but I think that Holdover Frenzied Swarm, or just a second Frenzied Swarm, might have been fine, too. Hard to say. This is the big killer. I fear. Yeah, I'm actually gonna tank this damage. Oh no, I redraw here. I'm gonna play the Ice Tornado. That's too much, I'll save. Yeah, I take 20. That damage doesn't matter that much. We have Bone Dog still. Bone Dog handles a lot of damage taken. But, yeah, and we redrew Ice Tornado. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to play. Prismal Dust. 63 times 5. That's enough to kill them both. Okay. And then I'm going to hold off and I'm going to play Ice Tornado on the next turn. Hopefully with an Energy Siphon. To kill here. Don't fail me, Ice Tornado. I missed this play. Hey, good job, Ice Tornado. Great work. Ice Tor- everyone, please give a round of applause to Ice Tornado. Excellent work, young Tornado. Void Binding, and we're gonna take 15 here. Okay. Uh, we should be fine because of damage shield, but I do need to look at these two enemies, make sure I'm paying attention, throw some stuff at them to give them ways to die. We don't want to die for fun. I have a no I have plenty of ways to kill this guy now. Hopefully it doesn't make a big difference either way. Oh, I get fucking bodied. <laughs> yeah, good job, Ice Tornado. Keep up the great work at not missing. Excellent work, Ice Tornado. But yeah, it doesn't look as good as I expected it to look. I think that I could have gotten away with the trial, though. Second Frenzied Swarm is probably the answer. We're scrambling for anything to keep us above water here. Prism Retrieval is good. This is an insulation card that doesn't actually cost me anything, because it is just an incant at the end of the day. This is better than Frozen Lance, and if I suddenly draw, like... If I draw both Eogorgons on turn one, I can draw Prism, Prism Retrieval and get it back and be okay, which is worth. Uh, so, there's two two schools of thought here. You can figure out for yourself what you believe is better. You can either go right and fish for holdover, or you can go left and duplicate void binding. I'm going to go left. I think it's more consistent, more playable. You can go right if you want. I think they're both okay. But I'm going to go left. Because the removals aren't that good, I think, at this point. And if I miss on holdover, I think we're much worse off. So we get a plus 10 piercing, that's gonna go on Ice Tornado- ah, Mine Claps. Mine Claps for short. And then I wanna peep the Trinket Shop. Hmm, a little Founding Seal? Don't mind if I do. Everstone Housing is good as well, but I have to be able to buy things. Plus 25 plus 10? Sure. That looks fine to me. That was- I- when I went into that shop, I, did, I wish I had vocalized this because it would have looked really cool. I, I thought to myself, either Pyrestone Housing or Founding Seal would be good if I go this way. Hey, look at that, there's both of them. Okay, I think that we are now in the clear. Give me a second Void Binding, 4 damage shield per turn. Give me a Spell Chain for the other Void Binding. And we should be happy and, happy and good to go. Gatorade. I, did I tell you I've been drinking the new drink I've been going for? I've been going for zero, zero sugar Gatorade lately. 
it's good. Like, I can't go for Zero Sugar Coke because I've drank Coke my whole life and I'm just like, I know what it tastes like, so it tastes wrong to me. Zero Sugar Gatorade, though? Yo. That's pretty good. I have a question for you. Why did I take Intrinsic Space Prison? Does anyone know? Does anyone have any fucking idea why I took this? What was I thinking? What did I say? Why did I take this? Because, like, it's absolutely worthless. What the hell does it do? Nothing. It lets me play a morsel? I have no clue what I thought that was going to do for us. This is exactly lethal. That's cool. So let's just play Frozen Lands, and then with 6 damage on 3 planks, it has to kill both of these guys. Pretty nice. I take the health over the attack here. We're, yeah, we're in the clear now. I think that any hesitation about this run is gone with Founding Seal, but I'm happy with how I played this out. I feel like we measured the threats and responded well to them. I feel like I identified where this run had problems and handled it pretty cleanly, and now we're doing 2102 to the Seraph. This run has- oh, I, Intrinsic Space Prison lets me play middle floor, of course. I don't think I was thinking that at the beginning, though. I highly doubt I thought that at the beginning of the run when I took it. But you know what? I'd love to take credit for it, so. By the way, I should have asked you this at the beginning. I'll put it in the description. Maybe someone will do this for me. Tell me how much health Bone Dog healed on this run. I would love to know how much I got back from Bone Dog because I played a bit of a, a bit of a high rolly gambit at the beginning, searching for a strong start to this run, and I didn't get it from the first combat. Right? I took the relic. I mean, no, that's not true. The relic that I got was Sigiled Seaweed, and I think Sigiled Seaweed made a massive difference on this run. I think Sigil Seaweed put in a an absolute load of work to get me here. So it seems un, un, uh, disingenuous, that's the word I'm looking for. It seems disingenuous to say I didn't get anything, but I didn't get, like, what I wanted, I guess. That's how I would put it. Give me the guy that has HP. Our early game is a little uncertain. Hate that I drew both Eel Gorgons, but I will probably live. I took Prism Retrieval for this. This is what Prism Retrieval is here for. Oh, good job, Link. So, I get to feel smart about that. Sorry, I didn't silence. I didn't silence Battle.net. Battle.net, shut the hell up. It makes a little noise whenever one of my friends starts playing a game. One of my friends just opened Overwatch. I knew it would make a noise. I actually didn't. I always forget I leave it open. Because it's been like two years since I last left Battle.net open. Yeah, it's Sigil Seaweed, by the way. By the way, I don't feel like I got any value out of my uh, out of my starting relic that I took the, the play Precious Plating for, by the way. Yeah, no, I don't think that really dis... <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, buddy. It's easy to, to look at it and just go like, oh, well, this doesn't seem like it did all that much. It's doing so much. You don't understand. It's doing an absurd amount. You gotta believe me, man. Sigil Seaweed is so good. I told you at the start I became a bit of a believer recently. I, I stand by it. Okay, so I'm getting hit here by spikes, but I can sneak around it. Sigil Seaweed has done- it has won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven coin flips in a row. It's like the- it's like the- the anti-plink. Oh, Frenzy's form doesn't get cost reduced, of course. I know that. I should have maybe just played it, but I'm holding the unnamed tome because there's a- no, I should have just played Frenzy's form there. I wouldn't have gotten the damage shield. I thought the damage shield was going to feel comparable, but it does not. But, again, with 2-2 two, two per round, not really a big threat anymore. No wait on the old Ice Tornado. I just end my turn. 
There's no reason to play anything else. I have Ice Tornado ready to go here with Energy Siphon. Prepped and ready. This is what I've been holding the silence for. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Sigil C. We'd very cool. Great work as always, buddy. We drew a Frenzy Swarm too, so we're chillin', chillin' here. Wow, good job, Ice Tornado. It even double hit the Divinity, which probably gave me enough damage to kill. That's a lot. This run definitely looked a little touch and go in the in the mid game going into combat seven. I think if we didn't hit Founding Seal, we would have been okay. It would have just been it, when we're killing pre relentless. I think without Founding Seal, we would have probably lived into relentless and won there. But it would have been a little closer. I'm happy with this run. I'm very happy. I feel like we made good measured choices in a reasonable amount of time. I didn't blaze through and die. We took our time. And we found our we found a good win. Good run. Very cool. How much damage? Yeah, so what did we take? We took 58 here, 4 here. Oh, that's it. So you can actually calculate how much health I healed from from Bone Dog here, I think. You can you can do your own calculations. Check my math here. But with precious plating, you start at plus 40, which means you start at 80 out of 120. And I took 62 at the beginning of the run, which means I was at 18 when I picked up Bone Dog. And I ended the run at full health, which would mean that Bone Dog healed me about 102 health. That's not actually true, though, because I took damage in some of these combats and then Bone Dog healed it, now that I think about it. So Bone Dog probably healed me like my whole Pyre health bar at least one time. Not a lot of times, though, where Bone Dog gets to be a hero like that. Thank you, Bone Dog. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.